welcome to this week's edition of the Transport Chat. This time we're going to be looking at structural changes to our transport systems, planes, trains and automobiles and everything in between. Now one of the main things that the coronavirus is going to change because of social distancing measures, newfound love of hygiene, for example, is our transport hubs. What are they going to look like? We've become largely accustomed to things like airports, train stations, bus stations, bustling with people, large gatherings of passengers and travellers. That's probably going to change. It's already changing. The few airports that are still operating and more than a skeleton service have already had to do this kind of thing. Even the very vehicles that take us places. France's state-owned railway operator, SNCF, is already starting to convert its TGV carriages to take fewer people. Who would have thought that a few months ago? Transport operators want to take fewer of us on their journeys, cut in their profit margins. Now, as far as planes are concerned, it's a slightly different story because a lot of experts say that you can't really social distance on a plane. Airlines have said that last week. They've said that things like blocking out the middle seat on a plane is just not going to happen because you need two meters of space. That means blocking out an entire row. It doesn't mean that it's profitable for them to even operate the flight. But as far as the hubs are concerned, you're going to see fewer people at the airport. There's going to be more queues, more space, more sort of room to breathe, if you will. As far as the airlines are concerned, some airlines have already started looking at how to get cargo into the flight cabin. I mean, you may, not, may or may not know this, but most planes carry a belly full of cargo to begin with anyway. It's not just all of our bags as we go on summer holidays. Some airlines are thinking about bringing that into the cabin, spacing out people with goods and packages that are secured secured. Now, what regulators will think of that is another thing. We'll have to see. But if this becomes the norm, then it may become kind of a case of airlines and cargo operators will become the same thing. There'll be logistics for packages and passengers. I think one of the most structural changes to this system, though, is going to be in our cities. You've already seen in places like Brussels, Milan, uh, Paris, Rome, uh, Vilnius, um, bike lanes, more, more room to walk, entire city centres given over to cafe lifestyle, as in Vilnius's case, 40 kilometres of extra cycle lane in Brussels, a place where you would hardly think that the bike is even on the top 10 of priorities in terms of vehicles. It's a huge change. Now, whether or not this is going to become permanent afterwards is another thing entirely, but we are in an unprecedented situation where these kind of changes are no longer unthinkable. Brussels may well become bike friendly, and join places like Amsterdam, Rotterdam, wherever, and be in a lowland country that actually values bikes. Now, the European Commission is working on a sustainable mobility strategy for the end of the year, and it's hard to imagine at this point this comprehensive strategy for decarbonizing transport, cutting emissions by 90%, not taking into account things like cycling, walking. It just doesn't make sense to discount those options anymore because people want it and people are clearly willing to take advantage of it. How often have you seen our car free car free days in Europe, normally in May, and people saying, well, why isn't this once a week, once a month, whatever? We're getting to that stage now where people are just ready for that kind of change because it's been forced upon us, which is often the way the big changes, big structural changes come anyway. So those are some of the main things that you're going to have to expect to change about our transport system. Um, hubs in particular, that will be a short-term change, and then more things like fewer cars in city centres, maybe accelerate the diesel bans, petrol bans, incentives for e-bike ownership, for example. That's all going to probably come, that's all on the agenda. Whether or not things like high-speed rail indeed take up the slack that is left by short-haul airlines, examples, that remains to be seen. We're, we're still in the middle of pandemic recovery period. So watch this space. Thanks for joining me again, and thanks for reading on down below for the rest of the newsletter, if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay well. Ciao.